Geometric function theory is the study of geometric properties of analytic functions. A fundamental result in the theory is the Riemann mapping theorem. Topic: <laughs> Topics in geometric function theory. The following are some of the most important topics in geometric function theory. Topic: Conformal maps. A conformal map is a function which preserves angles locally. In the most common case the function has a domain and range in the complex plane. More formally, a map f u v with u v c n Display style u v subset math b c caret n is called conformal or angle preserving at a point u zero. Display style u underscore zero if it preserves oriented angles between curves through u zero. Display style u underscore zero. With respect to their orientation, i.e., not just the magnitude of the angle. Conformal maps preserve both angles and the shapes of infinitesimally small figures, but not necessarily their size or curvature. Topic: <laughs> Quasi-conformal maps. In mathematical complex analysis, a quasiconformal mapping, introduced by Grotch and named by Alfers is a homeomorphism between plane domains which to first order takes small circles to small ellipses of bounded eccentricity. Intuitively, let f, d, d, be an orientation-preserving homeomorphism between open sets in the plane. If f is continuously differentiable, then it is k quasiconformal if the derivative of f at every point maps circles to ellipses with eccentricity bounded by k. If k is zero, then the function is conformal. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Analytic continuation. Analytic continuation is a technique to extend the domain of a given analytic function. Analytic continuation often succeeds in defining further values of a function, for example in a new region where an infinite series representation in terms of which it is initially defined becomes divergent. The stepwise continuation technique may, however, come up against difficulties. These may have an essentially topological nature, leading to inconsistencies defining more than one value. They may alternatively have to do with the presence of mathematical singularities. The case of several complex variables is rather different, since singularities then cannot be isolated points, and its investigation was a major reason for the development of sheaf cohomology. Geometric properties of polynomials and algebraic functions Topics in this area include Riemann surfaces for algebraic functions and zeros for algebraic functions. Riemann surface A Riemann surface, first studied by and named after Bernhard Riemann, is a one-dimensional complex manifold. Riemann surfaces can be thought of as deformed versions of the complex plane, locally near every point they look like patches of the complex plane, but the global topology can be quite different. For example, they can look like a sphere or a torus or several sheets glued together. The main point of Riemann surfaces is that holomorphic functions may be defined between them. 
Riemann surfaces are nowadays considered the natural setting for studying the global behavior of these functions, especially multi-valued functions such as the square root and other algebraic functions, or the logarithm. Topic: <laughs> Extremal problems. Topics in this area include Maximum principle, Schwartz's lemma, Lindelof principle, analogues and generalizations. Topic: <laughs> Univalent and multivalent functions. A holomorphic function on an open subset of the complex plane is called univalent if it is injective. One can prove that if G display style G and Omega display style Omega are two open connected sets in the complex plane and F G Omega display style F G to Omega is a univalent function such that F G equals omega display style f g equals omega that is f display style f is surjective then the derivative of f display style f is never zero f display style f is invertible and its inverse f minus 1 display style f caret minus 1 is also holomorphic more one has by the chain rule alternate terms in common use are schlicht this is german for plain simple and simple it is a remarkable fact, fundamental to the theory of univalent functions, that univalence is essentially preserved under uniform convergence. Important theorems Topic Riemann mapping theorem Let Z0 Z0 be a point in a simply connected region D1, D1 does not equal C D1, D1 NEQ math B C and D1 having at least two boundary points. Then there exists a unique analytic function w equals f z display style w equals f z mapping d one display style d underscore one bijectively into the open unit disk w one display style w such that f z zero equals zero display style f z underscore zero equals zero and f z zero greater than zero display style f z underscore zero greater than zero. Although Riemann's mapping theorem demonstrates the existence of a mapping function, it does not actually exhibit this function. An example is given below. In the above figure, consider d 1 display style d underscore 1 and d 2 display style d underscore 2 as two simply connected regions different from C display style math B C the Riemann mapping theorem provides the existence of W equals F Z display style W equals F Z mapping D one display style d underscore one onto the unit disk and existence of w equals g z display style w equals g z mapping d two display style d underscore two 
onto the unit disk. Thus, G minus one F display style G caret minus one F is a one-to-one -one mapping of D one display style D underscore one onto D two display style D underscore two if we can show that G minus one display style G caret minus one and consequently the composition is analytic we then have a conformal mapping of D one display style D underscore one onto D two display style D underscore two proving any two simply connected regions different from the whole plane C display style math B C can be mapped conformally onto each other topic Schwartz's lemma The Schwartz lemma, named after Hermann Amandus Schwartz, is a result in complex analysis about holomorphic functions from the open unit disk to itself. The lemma is less celebrated than stronger theorems, such as the Riemann mapping theorem, which it helps to prove. It is however one of the simplest results capturing the rigidity of holomorphic functions. Topic statement: Schwartz lemma. Let d topic z z zero. Then f z z for all z in d and f zero one. Moreover, if f z topic z for some non-zero z or f zero. One then F Z Topic As for some in C with a one Topic Maximum principle The maximum principle is a property of solutions to certain partial differential equations, of the elliptic and parabolic types. Roughly speaking, it says that the maximum of a function in a domain is to be found on the boundary of that domain. Specifically, the strong maximum principle says that if a function achieves its maximum in the interior of the domain, the function is uniformly a constant. The weak maximum principle says that the maximum of the function is to be found on the boundary, but may reoccur in the interior as well. Other, even weaker maximum principles exist which merely bound a function in terms of its maximum on the boundary. <laughs> Riemann-Hurwitz formula The Riemann-Hurwitz formula, named after Bernhard Riemann and Adolf Hurwitz, describes the relationship of the Euler characteristics of two surfaces when one is a ramified covering of the other. It therefore connects ramification with algebraic topology, in this case. It is a prototype result for many others, and is often applied in the theory of Riemann surfaces which is its origin, and algebraic curves. Topic statement: For an orientable surface S, the Euler characteristic chi S is two minus two g. Display style two to two grams, where g is the genus, the number of handles, since the Betti numbers are one, two grams, one, zero, zero. In the case of an unramified covering map of surfaces, pi s 
s display style pi s 2 s that is surjective and of degree n we should have the formula chi s equals n chi s display style chi s equals n c d o t chi s that is because each simplex of s should be covered by exactly n in s at least if we use a fine enough triangulation of s as we are entitled to do since the euler characteristic is a topological invariant what the riemann hurwitz formula does is to add in a correction to allow for ramification sheets coming together now assume that s and s are riemann surfaces and that the map pi is complex analytic the map π is said to be ramified at a point P in S if there exist analytic coordinates near P and π p such that π takes the form π z equals Zn, and n greater than 1. An equivalent way of thinking about this is that there exists a small neighborhood U of P such that π p has exactly one preimage in U, but the image of any other point in U has exactly n preimages in U. The number n is called the ramification index at P and also denoted by E p. In calculating the Euler characteristic of S, we notice the loss of E p minus one copies of P above π p, that is, in the inverse image image of pi p now let us choose triangulations of s and s with vertices at the branch and ramification points respectively and use these to compute the euler characteristics then s will have the same number of d dimensional faces for d different from 0 but fewer than expected vertices therefore we find a corrected formula chi s equals n chi s minus p element of s e p minus 1 Display style chi s equals n c d o t chi s sum underscore p in s e underscore p minus 1 all but finitely many p have e p equals 1, so this is quite safe. This formula is known as the Riemann-Hurwitz formula and also as Hurwitz's theorem. <laughs> 